Hello, my name is Leanne and I'm a Google Analytics Specialist and I've worked with a lot of marketers like you before who think that good is good enough. But the truth is we're always out there to get something better. We want things to be bigger, faster, stronger. And if you Google the word optimization, Wikipedia will define it as improving performance and like whatever things we have, we like the things to get better like having a house with a better view, driving a better car, or sometimes just having a makeover to improve the way we look. And just like your AdWords accounts, we want to make things better. But the first thing that you need to ask yourself, like Beth mentioned, is what do you really want to achieve? Do you want more orders from your website? Do you want to increase your sales by 15%, maybe more? Or do you want to have at least 40 visits or more? So these are the things that you need to ask yourself. And we have our friend here, Sergey, who's running a side business called the Google Store, where he sells a lot of different items online, like Google t-shirts, tumblers, beach towels, laptop bags, anything that he can put the Google logo on. So Sergey is using AdWords to drive traffic to his website and he's tracking it using analytics. And what is his goal? Sergey actually wants to increase his sales by 30% so that he can work on other cool Google products like the Nexus One and Google Chrome. So he needs that money. Now he's a smart cookie and the first thing that he did was to link his AdWords account to his analytics account. And by doing that, he can easily access his analytics report in his AdWords account. And aside from that, his AdWords data will be automatically imported to his analytics reports. And it will make it very easy for him to optimize his account. So that's a check. And the second thing that he did was enable e-commerce. So he's running an online store. He's doing online transactions. So he wants to make sure that he measures his online revenue and also analyze his data. And the thing here is, he also has a Google custom search engine installed in his website. And he enabled site search so that he can find out the search queries that customers use to find products online. So Sergey is a curious man. And the first thing that he wants to find out is, where the heck are my visits coming from? Should I be doing a global campaign, or should I be targeting a specific market? So the first thing that he did was to look at the map overlay report, which is under visitors tab, so that he can find out the different countries and territories that are interested in his products. And by navigating to the goals tab, he saw that he had a lot of visits from Singapore, but his goal conversion rate is not that great. Out of those 7,835 visits, only 20 visitors are completing an order. He also looked at the per visit goal value, and it's also not doing so well. And if you multiply this amount to the total visits, the total value of his transactions would be around $626. So what does this mean? It means that if he's investing $700 on Singapore, he's actually losing money. So what he did next was go to the e-commerce tab and found out that Thailand was bringing him a lot of revenue, which means that Thailand is a very profitable location. And he figured that if he can double the visits from Thailand, he can actually make more money. So what is he going to do next? The most logical thing is to add Thailand and other profitable locations to his AdWords targeting. He can also create a new campaign in Thai language so that he can drive more traffic to his website. And it's also a good business strategy for him to offer special discounts and promotions to profitable locations. So the next thing that he wants to find out is keywords. I want more keywords. I want profitable keywords. I want keyword cash cows. And I want to find out what keywords my customers are using. So he goes to the keywords tab under the traffic sources report and clicks on non-paid because these are the search terms that customers use on search engines. He also looks at the goals, goals tab and e-commerce tab. And in this example, he found out that Google Store was bringing him a lot of visits and also big revenue. So what he did was to add this keyword into his keyword list and also included different variations. His next gold mine is what we call the site search report. And here, if you click on search terms, you will find out the different keyword variations that users use to find your products online or in your website. 
he looked at the unique search queries and found out that people are actually interested in Blogger, Baseball, and for some reason, Google Apps bumper stickers. So what he did was add these keywords to his keyword list. When he clicked on e-commerce, he found something weird. There was a bunch of numbers that's bringing him a lot of revenue. So it doesn't really make sense for him to add 1013101. It sounds like a matrix code to his keyword list. So what he did was actually look for the product that this keyword is referring to. I wonder if anybody can guess. Yes, yes. Surprise, it's an Android t-shirt. So people like to buy an Android t-shirt. And, and he figured that he can also add this as a keyword to his keyword list. And another thing that Sergey really loves about analytics is its ability to export reports into CSV file. Because by doing this, he can easily find existing keywords on his account. What is he going to do next? He's going to find all the profitable non-paid keywords on his account and include this in his keyword list. And also, he's going to leverage the site search report and look for those products that users are looking for in his website. So I want to turn it over now to Iris, who's going to give you more optimization tips using analytics. Thanks, Leanne. There's a lot of Sergey in us because we also love to ask questions. The next question that Sergey would like to ask which sites are giving me the most visits? When people come to your site, they probably come from somewhere else, like a blog, a search engine, or Facebook. These are what you call referring sites. Now, Sergey would like to know which are the sites are his best friends. Looking into the referring sites report under traffic sources, we see Facebook. Although Facebook does not give him a high number of visits with 552, the per visit goal value is 15 cents and a total revenue of 84. Assuming um, Sergey invested $50 in Facebook, a total revenue of 84 less 50 gives you a net revenue of 30, which means that Facebook is one potential site. Similarly, this report also gives you sites which are not working for you. In this example, we see this blog with a lot of fat zeros. So it's time to exclude it using the site exclusion tool. You can log into your AdWords account, click on the Networks tab, click on the Exclusions link, and click on the Add Exclude Placement button. And here you can specify the list of URLs that you would want to exclude. Now, if you add this, um, if so your ad now will not appear um, in these sites in the content network. Now, Sergey finds this seopedia.org with a total visit of 200 and high conversion rate of 2.44. What can Sergey do? Key in this URL in Google Trends and find other similar sites which users have visited. What are Sergey's next steps? First, find websites which, with low quality visits and exclude them in the site exclusion tool. And second, placement target high performing sites to increase his ad exposure and find similar sites by using Google Trends. Now, Sergey would like to increase his sales further, so he checked on his ads, keywords, and landing pages if they are effective. Your landing page is where you send your users to. If your landing page is not effective, it's not appealing, then it would simply be like the user went to your site, the site sucked, and he left. That's bouncing. With a high degree of bounces, you're like paying AdWords for nothing. The right keyword, the right ad text, and the right landing page is the recipe for campaign success. In what way? Let's look at the keyword bounce rate report with Google Kids and Google for Kids with high bounce rate, higher than site average. It could be because users do not find these terms relevant to your landing page. Apart from the keyword, let's also look at the ads. Here are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself. Do I have good keywords but weak ad text? Do I have ad text that are leading to landing pages with high bounce rates? Or what are my best performing ads? If you have a landing page with high bounce rate, don't panic and go crazy. You need to check first if your ads, your landing pages, and your keywords are effective. If there's nothing wrong with your keyword, nothing wrong with your landing page, then it's time to scream at your website designer to fix the site. What are Sergey's next steps? 
analyze the relationship and performance of keywords, ad text, and landing page, and make sure that they are in sync. Optimize keywords with high bounce rates. Experiment with different ad text variations. And try Website Optimizer to op optimize the web page. It's a wrap. Three things that you need to do after this event. Link your AdWords with your analytics account, set up goals, and set up e-commerce. What are the five reports that you love? Map overlay. Keyword here is map. You'll be able to find cities, regions, and territories that are interested in your products. Traffic sources report. Keyword here is traffic sources. You'll be able to find sources of traffic in your site. Site search. These are the terms users are using to find products in your site which you can add in your keyword list. Bounce rate, these are the rates that you'd want to avoid because simply users will be entering and leaving the site and doing nothing. Lastly, set up goals and e-commerce so that you can measure the value of your transactions. Thank you.